Hi, I'm Carolyn Bradley. I'm a Head of Drama and a Lead Practitioner for Teaching and Learning and I'm based in Leeds. I'm here today to talk to you at the Aspire Power of the Arts Conference about the role of drama in character education. So I believe that drama is vital in developing the socio and emotional learning in young people. And that to me is um, a real strength of a subject and is part of what we could say is the character of young people. So I'll talk to you today about what character education is, if it can be taught, and then in my opinion, why drama is in a great position to teach character in schools. So what is character education, first of all? This is not a new concept. It dates back to the ancient Greek philosophers and it's centered around living well through virtuous, moral and ethical means. So to live well, to be a good character is about being a good person and flourishing in society. And people believe that we can teach this and we should teach this to young people. There's a quote here from Harrison who says, as young people's lives involve making decisions in ethical situations, character education provides opportunities and guidance to help young people make a wise choice when faced with moral dilemmas. So it's about using education whilst young people are in that stage of becoming um, to help them uh, and through guiding them towards becoming more virtuous, becoming good people and flourishing in society through learning and developing wisdom. So this concept of character education dates back to Aristotle. So Aristotle came up with the concept of eudaimonia, which translates as happiness or as flourishing. And in Aristotle's opinion, this is the end goal for human life. So Aristotle thought that if we live and act well, then we will flourish and we will achieve happiness. And because we'll be achieving a happy life through the virtuous activity of our soul, not through gain or through selfishness, or not through meeting a set of specific circumstances. It's just about achieving a state of happiness. And um, this links to arete, which translates as excellence or virtue. And it's a way of living your life and acting in an excellent way. And that means making good choices so that you are able to live this good life. So that's the definition of having good character. A final term is phronesis. And that's more about wisdom. So this idea of practical wisdom and good sense. So if we can have phronesis, then it will help us achieve eudaimonia. So achieve happiness or achieve flourishing. So there's an idea that we can teach phronesis and um, this idea of developing practical wisdom through guiding young people to make positive choices, um, through developing wisdom, through helping them see what right choices are and helping them achieve happiness and flourishing in their life. So there's been a recent resurgence in character education. It's something that you may be familiar with from the press. Over the last 10 years, there's been more of a focus on how schools should teach good character. And think, things like teaching grit and resilience have been in and out of the press. But good character is more about just building character virtues in young people. Um, there is a Jubilee Centre for Character and Virtues, which is located at the University of Birmingham, and they've released a framework for character education. And this is a great document which gives a, a brilliant summary of what character is, why character is important and how schools can develop character. So the Jubilee Centre summarised that schools should enable students to become good persons and citizens, able to lead good lives as well as becoming successful persons. And we know this is not a new concept. You know, we've been teaching PSHE or PSE or HE or whatever it used to be called in its various um, areas of development for years and years and years, dating back to the 1950s. So the idea of that what we were teaching PSHE is perhaps about developing um, civic virtues, being a good citizen, learning how to operate in society. And we know that schools are communities and they are mini societies. So they are perfect places for developing character. The Jubilee Centre in their framework um, developed these building blocks of character. And these are a fantastic way of, of kind of splitting up the different character virtues. And they choose to split them up in these four areas. So we've got moral character virtues and their personality traits such as compassion, courage, gratitude, honesty. And um, so they're not about academic learning. They're about being a good, a good person and a moral citizen. We've then got performance character virtues. 
And they're things like confidence, determination, motivation, perseverance. They are character traits that we might be more familiar with in the classroom because they relate to academic success. There's a, you know, obviously metacognition, we're very familiar with that as a concept. Um, we've then got the intellectual character virtues such as critical thinking, autonomy, curiosity, judgment. And again, they're very familiar to us as teachers or practitioners in schools because we need those skills to be successful learners. We've then got the civic character virtues. And they're, again, coming back to moral character, they're more about being a good citizen. So things like civility, community awareness, neighbourliness and service. A lot of schools already have an established framework where they award positive points or merit points, or they have systems where um, they um, students are expected to demonstrate what a good person is in their school through these kind of civic character virtues. So this might be not new to you at all. But what I want to establish today is how drama as a subject is in a brilliant position to teach these things, all of these virtues, from the moral to the performance to the intellectual and to the civic. And so what I'm going to do today for the rest of this presentation is explain why I think drama is a brilliant subject for developing character. So what role does drama play in character education? I refer to there being a duality of learning in drama. There is a learning in drama and the learning from drama. So we can learn about empathy, for example. Empathy is a skill. So a student would need to demonstrate that they can use empathy to perform a character. But also empathy is a skill for life beyond the classroom. So it's a skill to be taught in the classroom, but it's also a value to be gained from the study of drama. So I refer to that as duality of learning because Drama presents an opportunity for um, learning through imagined worlds, but then taking that learning outside of the classroom. So this formulates my classroom philosophy as a drama teacher. I see anecdotally every day young people developing character traits which are positive for their character within the drama classroom. So empathy, for example, I think does that for the subject. Empathy might be a skill that students use in role play and through imaginative play from a very, very young age, using drama strategies such as Mantle of the Expert or, you know, simply improvisation and role play. And I'll look at that a little bit more later on. But there's also the performative nature of drama and indeed other art subjects such as music and dance, which make them really powerful in developing character. Because as practitioners, we see every day young people having to be really brave and really resilient to perform in front of their peers, in front of public audiences. And that's a really unique aspect of our subject that you don't see in other subjects in the secondary classroom. Really interestingly, this was mentioned in the Jubilee Centre's report on character education. So the report stated that students who took part in extracurricular music or drama outperformed those who said they did not when they were faced with moral dilemmas. So the study asked young people to respond to um, theoretical moral dilemmas and they also then categorised those young people into their different activities around um, school. So there's something really specific there about it was extracurricular music or drama. So that would refer to public performances that are done voluntarily rather than classroom exploration. And this really supports my own suppositions from my own practice. So again, anecdotally, every year, if we're putting on a school show, we see young people really flourish and really develop their characters. So I see young people developing really positive character traits. So um, in having to negotiate the balance between their classroom work, their school work, their homework, and the commitment of an after school show, um, the trust, the tolerance of other people, the respect they need for their peers if they're working in a really big ensemble, the respect they need for the teachers, the directors, the choreographers. They also learn from participating in a big extracurricular school production, for example, what can really result from hard work, perseverance and motivation. And they are really positive character traits. So they are some of the performance character virtues from the Jubilee Centre's framework. If a student was cast in um, your school musical, for example, over a period of three months, they would be receiving feedback constantly, being asked to improve their performance constantly. So through that, they're learning humility, they're learning reflection. Again, it's about trust. Um, it's about sort of having the 
respect for the, the process that they're part of. And when I researched this as an area, I found that there was some really um, quite old research in this. So I'm not alone in this um, concept of really believing in the potential of harnessing drama um, for development of character. And I found a piece of writing by Cook from 1917, who was a progressive educator who produced a school performance where he gave the pupils entire responsibility for the production. And I found that cited in Gavin Bolton's work from 1985, but that dates back to 1917. So the concept of giving the pupils the responsibility for a production um, to produce it themselves, maybe do the lighting, the sound, the set, the costume, it's really compelling them to engage positively in teamwork. They've got to negotiate power, trust, tolerance, um, they've got to build respect, they've got to have motivation, perseverance, and they're building community relationships. I think if young people can learn positively from an extracurricular experience, it's really going to help them develop character and flourish and live well and actively. Joe Winston says that in drama, young people can develop a sense of the self in relation to others. And I think we've just explored that when talking about the communities that can be built up through any kind of performative drama, whether that's in the curriculum, you know, for preparation of an exam or whether that's extracurricular drama, because students in drama and in dance, for example, and in music ensembles and choirs are constantly having to see themselves in relation to others. Everything we do in drama has a group goal and a group aim. Even if it's a drama game, um, a warm up or a starter activity, they're often having to negotiate themselves in relation to other people. And I think that's a really powerful part of what we do in our subject. Um, you may be very familiar with Dorothy Hethcote's work on Mantle of the Expert. So the Mantle of the Expert technique was used to put the students at the centre of the drama inquiry. So through planning fictional contexts where students were able to become experts, then they were learning through imaginative play about a range of different subjects. So this could be applied to cross-curricular learning. So we could be exploring ancient Greece by the students acting out the roles of archaeologists on a discovery. Um, but it just fundamentally is the idea of lifting the lived experience beyond reality. But within that imaginative play, there is, again, a sense of community, a sense of students seeing themselves in relation to others, a sense of empathy being developed. And then this lovely quote from Tim Taylor, who is a contemporary practitioner of Mantle of the Expert, where he says, um, within the fiction of, of the role play of Mantle of the Expert, the students become these experts with power and with autonomy. They become people with responsibilities and duties to others, a community with agreed values and a defined purpose, colleagues with a shared history of challenges, mistakes and success, experts with training and experience. And that is a lovely way to describe what students become in that transformative world of Mantle of the Experts. They become colleagues with each other. So through that learning in this imagined world, they're being able to test out the real challenges of living in a community and being part of a society. And I think that is a really powerful way that they can develop their character. Whilst Mantle of the Expert may be more used in primary settings, drama in secondary settings can explore some really challenging and complex materials. It can explore moral, ethical, political, social situations, which students may not have come into contact with in their lived experience, but can then challenge their responses to these ordinary and extraordinary situations. So Jo Winston says again that in drama is that opportunity for students to consider the implications of specific human actions within a range of ordinary and extraordinary situations. And to me, that could be as simple as reading a play, which explores something quite challenging, such as a complex issue around climate change or race um, or a historical period um, of time that was challenging. Or it could be through performance and through acting out scenarios in these imagined worlds. So through trial and error, through improvisation or play or acting, students can test out moral responses and through that practice can develop character. Because if we think about any topic or skill that we want our students to learn, whether it's something like writing, we need to practice it. And through trial and error, we get better at it. 
And so we can do the same for developing character and drama provides a safe space for that to happen. And I think that's really interesting. If you think about phronesis as being practical wisdom, if you think of that as a skill to be learned and developed, it's, it's like it's a decision making muscle and we can practice it within the drama classroom. Um, within drama, we also have this concept of forum theatre invented by Augusto Boal, where the outcome of the play can be changed. So that gives a really safe space for testing out responses, um, challenging different scenarios and outcomes. So within drama, the scene or the outcome of a play can be changed. It can be stopped, acted out, rewound, discussed, changed again, modified in a way that the real world cannot. So what that does is it provides the safe space and this is from Hunter, um, where students can consider their developing character. And that can be a really high priority if the work that is being explored in the classroom is quite social or political or com complex, where morals and values are questioned. So because we've got the concept of students becoming adults, um, they're, they're not fully fledged adults yet, they need this safe space to test out complex responses to situations which may go beyond their lived experience. And I think, again, drama in a way that is not offered by different subjects does provide the platform and the opportunity to do that. Thank you for joining me and for listening to my theories of why I think drama is a great subject for developing character. So we established today that character education is about living well and flourishing. It can be taught and it should be taught alongside what we teach in the academic subjects of school. The Jubilee Centre for Character and Virtues in Birmingham is a great place to check out um, their resources on the framework they provide for UK schools and their building blocks for good character are brilliant starting points. I believe drama provides a duality of learning. We are teaching a skill, we're teaching performance skills and design skills and written skills, but we can also learn from what we look at in drama, such as the empathy with which we can then take into life. Drama also provides the opportunity for character traits uh, from the performance opportunities and the extracurricular side of drama. And then we also looked at how drama provides a safe space where through imaginative play, students can develop responses to situations beyond their lived experience. So thank you very much. My references that I've used today are here and you can keep in touch with me on Twitter and I wish you well in your creative endeavours. Thanks very much.